Good morning. Now we're continuing with this. This is the second board. I erased the previous one and we're continuing to substitute in the Riemann normal coordinates. Riemann normal. Some people say, well, it's the proper pronunciation is Riemann. I say Riemann because I'm pronouncing it badly. Into the Klein Gordon operator. The Klein Gordon operator was this one. And now I simplified this because actually to do this uh, in the big scale, it, it, it gets a little bit longer, but it does not lend itself to a YouTube presentation and the calculations can get quite long. Basically what we're doing is we're treating quantum fields on a curved space. In other words, we're taking the flat space and adding curvatures in an asymptotic expansion, which is known as, well, it's the Riemann normal coordinate expansion. Now I'm stopping at order y squared. Y's are normal coordinates constructed at a point, and locally this part is flat. Uh, new mu nu would be the flat metric. Now, most of these people use c equals one. I'll talk about that later. I have a unit, units coming up. That's coming up. Now I remember I remarked that. The mother of all papers is Leonard Parker and David Toms, Physical Review D, 29, 8, 1984. Preceding this is also another great paper. These are the two foundations, in my view, of quantum fields in curved space. Uh, Bunch and Parker, Physical Review D again, 20, 10, 1979, five years earlier. And if you actually want to learn uh, techniques of the calculations, especially using the Schwinger de Witt expansion, well, there's nothing to beat my own little paper with Bellucci, the O'Reilly and S. Bellucci, Nuclear Physics B, 364, page 495 to, five, to 515 or something, I forget, 1991. So that's basically what's going on here. So, what did we have? The definition of the metric in Riemann normal coordinates with the curvature, nu nu downstairs and nu nu upstairs is the same thing with a positive sign. Now the Christoffel symbol lambda mu nu is just one negative one third or lambda. Now the rho is in here and the y rho is there, so the mu nu's and the nu mu's are just swapped. So that's the Christoffel symbol. I also could do a der uh, derivative of that, but I, I didn't need it because I'd only, I stopped at first order. So the covariant derivative now. The covariant derivative of vector mu with respect to lambda is d lambda of the vector mu. So that's d by d lambda, partial derivative of b mu, plus the curvature part. As I said before, it's like differentiation following the motion. This is like a kind of a rotation, not quite. Christoffel symbol is this one here. Now we proceed to substitute in uh, for the covariant derivative in terms of the more complicated quantities. Okay, so we take this derivative. When you take a derivative of a scalar field, you get a vector, right? So this behaves like a vector a mu. So we're taking d lambda of a vector a mu, which is like this thing here, and we then just do the partial derivative of it, followed by the rotating part of it. And the vector itself is still there. We could substitute in and call it v, you know, some vector v rho if you want, if it makes it clearer to you. Now, partial derivative because, sorry, covariant derivative, first of all, of this object here, we take the partial derivative. This times this is just this. It's a scalar, so that the covariant derivative of a scalar is just the partial derivative. And the first part of the whole quantity is just the partial derivative of the scalar derivative, right? And then we have the gamma. There's the gamma. So I'm just substituting in the gamma, negative one third, or rho, lambda, tau, mu, with the y tau being the Riemann normal coordinate, and the vector itself down here, the rho and the rho. That is the vector that we're taking the, the derivative of. Okay, so now I said clear board time. This is only part of the calculation because we need g mu nu times this whole object, okay? So I have to do that. I have to do g mu nu times this, so it's only a straight multiplication. So let me show you that.
Well, actually, I've done it already, so I'm not going to do it by hand. Just write it out. Time to think that we had. Oh, that's it. And you just have to multiply this object out. And when we multiply it all out, we get the following. Mu lambda times mu lambda saturates the indices. And we saturate two more indices there. there. Now I've got out of space, so I'm going to get rid of this. Now you guys will have to go away and check this, but it's right, don't worry. Always good when you can say, I leave that as an exercise for the reader. People who are teaching do that a lot. And of course, we have one more term that's the opposite. Wait now. La lambda mu, lambda tau mu, rho sigma. This should be mu lambda. more complicated. So what I could do is I could do use a cutoff. So if we only want to go to lower order and we don't want to go to higher order, we just keep this small result. Now don't forget, there's a minus m squared phi in here somewhere. I, I just dropped it. Um, it should be in there. Other than that, 
that's the result, really. So we'll take the Klein Garden equation on curved space to be like this. Let's just simplify the whole thing and not deal with it. Just to first order, lowest order. So on curved space, we just get this extra curvature term. So that's a way for introducing gravity to quantum fields on curved space using Riemann normal coordinates. Now, we can also go now into momentum space. That's a different idea altogether, and I'm going to leave it for a separate talk. I hope that wasn't too blurry because there's a lot of mu's and mu's in there. But this is the bottom line. This is this on curved space in its story, right? And it's a way to include gravity along with quantized fields. In this case, it's just a scalar field. You can do the exact same thing for a Dirac field. You can do the exact same thing for a vector field. That's a long story. We'll leave it for another day.